Hey guys, how are you? I hope you're okay. I hope that you have been having fun and enjoying your vacations. I hope that you um, haven't had any problem during the weekends that you have been off. I hope that you enjoyed uh, the division quarter that we did. Um, let's start. It, uh, today I'm going to show you uh, an example of how you are going to work in your notebook because I need a little more organization. Uh, from now on on the quarter we're only going to uh, read the page of the story in one day and then the questions in another day but when i read the, the story i'm going to give you three four five some questions uh that are going to come from the from the story and they're going to be done by paragraphs because as you can see in the stories from the textbook not the reading book not lemoncello forget about lemoncello right now uh from the book um the, all the paragraphs have numbers, so I'm going to give you questions based on those numbers. Um, so um, today we are going to start with the date, so I'm going to do what you should be doing. I did it earlier with, uh, with four grades, so as you can see, date in cursive, everything in cursive, very clear, and then the number of page of the story that we are reading, uh, and then uh, the, the name of the story. Uh, and then the questions, remember questions in cursive, answers in pencil, and, uh, and print. And remember, we're writing from what paragraph every story is coming because w w depending on the paragraph, you're going to find the answer. Just to clarify something, eh, algunos de ustedes tuvieron problemas el parcial pasado porque insistían en enviarme páginas de historias que yo no había pedido o que yo no había leído. Entonces pienso que eh, ya casi estamos en sexto grado y sería ideal que ustedes leyeran muy bien las instrucciones y se fijaran qué página de qué libro les estoy pidiendo. El currículum pide que ustedes tengan la capacidad analítica de leer el título de un libro y encontrar una página para segundo grado. En segundo grado tienen que poder leer que diga Lemonchelo 25 y usted se va a Lemonchelo, pero algunos lo que hacían es que le leían 25 y se iban al otro libro. Entonces necesito de su concentración porque de acuerdo a lo que vamos avanzando ya van para sexto grado. Entonces en sexto grado la exigencia es mucho más grande. Lean las instrucciones porque no las están leyendo. Ahora voy a postear los videos con el título de las cosas, pero tienen que ver el video para saber las instrucciones, porque solo están viendo la instrucción, completan algunas cosas que están en la instrucción y no miran el video y esa es su clase. Entonces, básicamente no están yendo a clase. So, remember, date in cursive, page that I'm going to give you, the page, it's written on the bottom of the book, it says the number of the page, in the page, not on top of anything in the PDF, on the page you're going to find the number, in the corner, and then the story name, and then the questions, remember, with a paragraph number, questions in cursive, answers in pencil, okay? Let's do it. Today we are going to read um, page number 46. So let's go to page 46, okay? So if we go there, wait, uh, okay. So I'm gonna write the date. Today is Thursday. No, today is Wednesday. So let's write the date. Today is Wednesday, January 7th, 2021. Excellent. Okay, so after this, we are going to write the number of page. So with a pen in cursive, I go and I write page 46 and then the name of the story. The Art of Elephants. The Art of Elephants. Okay? Like this. See? The Art of Elephants. So I have the date, and then the, the page, the number of the page, and then the title of the story. Now, let's read the story. The Art of Elephants. What makes a drawing or a painting a piece of art? A drawing is a picture that you draw. 
If your cat walk across something you were painting and left footprints behind, would you consider your cart an artist? What if your bird could hold a color pencil in its beak and make marks on a piece of paper? These ideas might sound like a joke to you, but some people have been taking animal art very seriously. In 1995, two Russian-American artists, Vitaly Komar and Alex Melamir, first heard about the troubled elephants of Thailand. Elephants were used for hundreds of years in Thailand's logging industry to haul timber from forests in areas where there were no roads. So, these, these, uh, these people, these Russian artists, um, they heard that elephants were being exploded. They were being exploited. They were being mistreated. They were treated super bad. And they would put a lot of trees on their back and they would make them pull them. Just like you would do to a horse or to a donkey. You would put things on their backs and you make them pull it. Like a cart. So they would use the elephants and they would abuse them. And the elephants would be tired and they would be sad and they would be sick and eventually they would die. So they heard about these elephants, um, and then uh, they wanted to do something for them. When the forests of Thailand began to slowly disappear, the government put a stop to logging. All of a sudden, there were many elephants who no longer had a way to make a living. Some elephants were abused, others had to try to survive on their own, and couldn't find enough to eat. There were once tens of thousands of elephants living in Thailand. Today, there are less than 5,000. Komar and Melamid knew that something had to be done to help the elephants. Then, they came up with an idea that would forever change the way people regarded Thai elephants. Thai is from Thailand. And you can see a picture of the elephant with the pictures. Komar and Melamid visited elephant camps in Thailand. They, there, they began to show the Mahouts, or elephant trainers, that's the name of an elephant trainer, a Mahout, how to teach the elephants to paint? At first, the mahouts have to guide the elephants' trunk with their trunks. The elephants became more comfortable doing this with practice and lots of sweet snacks. And finally, it started to paint on their own. So they were giving them little snacks, peanuts or peanut butter or different kind of leaves as a prize if they painted something. The strange idea that Komar and Melamid had to save the elephants actually began to work. They helped found several elephant art schools in Thailand and in other Asian countries. The elephants and their mahouts go, to the, go there to learn about painting and to get the supplies they need. Painting, uh, sorry, today people buy elephant artwork from galleries all around the world. Some are even willing to pay more than $2,000 for the work of the elephant artists. Some people have compared the cheerful, brightful coral owl work to the work of abstract painters like Jackson Pollock and Valik, Vasily Kandinsky. Other people are just happy to buy art that is so unique and original and that supports such a good cause. The next time you see a piece of colorful abstract art, find out who the artist is you may just be surprised at what you learn. So an abstract painting is something like what we did yesterday. It's something that doesn't necessarily have any meaning or it doesn't necessarily follow a, a, a reason, but you just do it because it's um, outstanding for you. It's something that it's uh, beautiful and it's something that you find their own meaning to it. So, after reading the story, we can learn that the people in Thailand used to use elephants as horses or as donkeys to haul, to, to, to take logs, pieces of trees on their backs or in carriages. And, um, and when they no longer could do it, then they were this, uh, discharged. They didn't need them anymore. So the elephants couldn't find anything to do with their lives. But now that elephants have found ways to deal with their lives um, because of art their lives are changing obviously we're talking as a subject in here that is uh, hypothetical because elephants don't think as humans but I'm pretty sure they have feelings like any other being so after discussing the story we are going to write a couple questions so I'm gonna give you 
a number of paragraphs, a question in cursive with a pen, and then you're going to answer that question with a pencil in print. Ready? Let's do it. So we are going to write in here questions and then number one. Okay? So remember, from paragraphs, okay? I'm going to give you the questions by paragraphs, okay? Number from number one. From paragraph number two. And then in another line, you're going to write the question from paragraph number two. According to the paragraph, what did elephants do in the past? Now remember something, you have to answer the questions in complete sentences. Why? I'm going to say it in Spanish so maybe your parents can hear it too. Como parte de su aprendizaje de una segunda lengua, una lengua extranjera, el currículum nacional básico americano, norteamericano, que es el que usamos para dar clases, que se llama Standards, Standards, depende si usted escribe Standards de un cierto estado de los Estados Unidos, le aparece lo que tiene que aprender un niño que está aprendiendo a ser bilingüe, eh, usted tiene que hacer su vocabulario más grande para poder tener conversaciones fructíferas y fluidas con una persona. Porque si usted lo mandan a estudiar a los Estados Unidos y usted solo puede responder con monosílabos, sí, no, estaba, sí era feliz, pero la pregunta le dice, responda por qué. Entonces usted tiene que elaborar su respuesta, porque eso va a hacer que su vocabulario crezca. Porque no sirve de nada que usted se memorice todo en su cabecita y que todo sea memorizado, memorizado, memorizado. Porque en una situación desconocida, en un viaje, tal vez alguien la llama y hay un accidente y le piden ayuda, usted tiene que estar preparado para usar su vocabulario independientemente de la situación. Entonces, la razón por la que le pido que responda con bastantes oraciones su pregunta es porque ahí estoy evaluando cuánto inglés puede utilizar usted con lo que sabe. Y si yo miro que sabe poco, tengo que enseñarle más para que usted sepa mucho más. Entonces le pido que la respuesta que le estoy pidiendo en las preguntas la elabore. Usted use parte de la pregunta. Esa es la primera parte. Parte de la pregunta va a ser su respuesta. Así usted escribe de una manera profesional y elaborada. Entonces, eventualmente, cuando se salga de la escuela, usted va a tener un inglés fluido y abundante, y no monosilábico y corto. ¿Sí? Vaya pues, bien. So, from paragraph number two. According to the paragraph, what did elephants do in the past? So, if we read paragraph two, it says, In 1995, two Russian-American artists, Vitaly Komar and Alex Melamid, First, hear about the troubled elephants in Thailand. So, first, we can see that they're troubled. They're in trouble, okay. Elephants were used for hundreds of years in Thailand's logging industry. Logging is when they cut the trees and they put them in the animals' backs. In forests in areas where there were no roads, when the forests in Thailand began to slowly disappear, the government put a stop to logging. All of a sudden, there were many elephants who no longer had a way to make a living. So, these animals, the, the, the pe people used to cut the trees, <whistles> they would fall, and then the elephant would put a rope in there, and then the elephant would have to haul the trees. He would have to pull them, because elephants are strong. But they're not animals of charge. Sometimes donkeys are used like that. But again, they're, they're weak at, you know, at, at, until some point. So, according to the paragraph, what did elephant do in the past? You can do. In the past, elephants were, were in trouble because people would cut trees and make them hold them. Or, in the past, elephants were in trouble because they were used to haul logs. So, in there, you are using part of a long vocabulary. Remember, this is the best for yourself. Not for me, because I already do some English for yourself, so you can have an excellent and fluent language. 
I'm not gonna give you the answer. So you have to write the answer. But I'm giving you the idea of the answer. Number two. Remember, the answer is in pencil with a print from paragraph number four. Describe What is a Kahoot? Kahoot is uh, no Mahoot. M a h o u t s. Describe what is a Mahoot like this. So I have question. This is space for the answer that you're gonna do, and then from paragraph number four, describe what is a Mahoot. Okay. So we have Mahoot. And then, what is a mahout? Let's go to paragraph number four. It says, Komar and Melamir visited elephant camps in Thailand. There, they began to show the mahouts, or elephant trainers, how to teach the elephants to paint. So, let's read again. It says in there, Then, there, there, they began to show the mahouts, or elephant trainers. Now, if you're just writing here, elephant trainers, you're giving me an idea, but you're not giving me an answer. I need an answer. So what would be the correct answer? Because the question says, describe what is a mahout. Then you write, a mahout is a person that trains elephants. Or a mahout is an elephant trainer. See how different it is from elephant trainer to a mahout is an elephant trainer? This exceeds what you have to, no exceeds, requests, the question requests for you to elaborate it, to make it nicer, to sound more like an American person, and not just gives the scraps of what you know. You can do amazing, okay? Those are gonna be the questions for today. Tomorrow, we are going to discuss the question pages. I'm not always gonna give you two questions. This time, I'm only gonna give you two questions. Um, we're not going to have uh, live classes this week because we have um, review uh, a reschedule for exams next week. So next week we are going to have live classes, not this week, okay? So I hope that you're okay. I hope that you are um, having fun at home. Remember to answer all the questions in your notebook and use the dates and the kinds of pens and pencils that I ask you to. And I hope that you enjoy. Have a nice day, and remember, this is going to be sent soon, so work on it. Bye, guys.